Hello, this is Tara from Northwest Association for Blind Athletes, and thanks for tuning in for our secondary virtual outdoor pursuits physical education lesson. We are going to start with our disclaimer. We'll go over the standards that we're going to cover, and then we'll get started. So as a reminder, you should always consult with your doctor before beginning any type of exercise or physical activity. You are responsible for your own health and safety at all times. We encourage you to self-monitor throughout the workout, take breaks when needed, hydrate, and modify your activity based on how you and your body are responding to the workout. The standards that we are going to cover today are standard three, the physically literate individual demonstrates the knowledge and skills to achieve and maintain a health enhancing level of physical activity and fitness. Standard number four, the physically literate individual exhibits responsible personal and social behavior that respects self and others. And standard number five, the physically literate individual recognizes the value of physical activity for health, enjoyment, challenge, self-expression, and or social interaction. So today we are going to do our outdoor pursuits lesson. So so what we're going to do is we're going to do three different circuits and those circuits are going to be based off of activities that we would do for outdoor pursuits. So we will have a summer circuit, a spring and autumn circuit, and a winter circuit that we are going to do. Each circuit has three exercises. We are going to do each exercise for 30 seconds. We'll have a 10 second transition time and then we will do, uh, we will continue to do each exercise three times through before we switch to the next circuit. We'll start with a warm up and end with a cool down. So, starting with our warm up, we can walk in place, and I'll just continue talking while we're walking. I'm going to walk back and forth across my yoga mat so I stay in my exercise space. Uh, so, we will be using an app today called Tabata, which is T A B A T A. And this app um, is a timer that um, also will say verbal cues. So it'll say exercise when it's time to exercise, it'll say rest when it's time to rest, and so on. So uh, we'll be using that. We're going to do three sets, three rounds, 30 seconds with 10, 30 seconds exercise, 10 second rest or transition time. And I definitely recommend you to get a drink of water if you uh, can to put it next to your space so that you can take drinks during that transition time if you need. Uh, we'll stop walking and now we'll start doing arm circles. So I'll put my hands up into a T shape, left fingertips point to the wall to my left, right fingertips point to the wall to my right. If my fingertips are paint brushes, I'm going to slowly paint circles on either side of me, rolling my arms and shoulders forward, starting with small circles and working my way towards making big ones, slowly and gradually. All right. So now that we have done forward, let's reverse direction. Let's go backwards, starting with those small circles again. Working your way to bigger circles. Alrighty, we're gonna move on to high knees. We um, so we always move in all position when we're doing um, any sort of leg and arm exercise. So when we move in all position, that means your leg that you move is the opposite one from your hand. So if I am doing high knees and I raise my left leg, my right arm is gonna come forward. That's all position. So my right arm is gonna be bent in a 90 degree angle or an L shape. And what I'm gonna do is lift my left knee up to the sky. And as I do that, I bring my uh, right elbow forward. So left knee up, right elbow forward, and then down. Right knee up, left elbow forward. So that knee is going to your chest or towards the ceiling, and your opposite arm is moving forward. Awesome. So those are high knees. So we will continue to do these. You can do them at a marching pace. You can do them at a walking pace. You can do them at a running pace. Whatever pace feels good for you today. I'm going to start off with a marching pace just so I can weaken the body up a little bit. Alrighty. And now we'll move on to windmill toe touches. So spread your feet out far apart, wider than shoulder width, but not so you're in a split. So you definitely want to be so comfortable. Um, and I, I would say there's about two and a half uh, feet of distance between my right and my left foot. Um, uh, I'm 
five foot three. So that might be different for you if you have different size legs. Uh, putting my arms out into a T shape, like we started with those arm circles. And what I'm going to do is take my right hand, bend over and touch my left foot. And when I do that, my left hand comes up to the ceiling. If I can't touch my left foot and I just reach my left shin or my left knee, totally fine. Come back up to that T-shape, left hand to right foot, right hand to the ceiling, and come back up. So we will continue alternating and continue doing that windmill alternating toe touch action at your own pace. Awesome. Let's get a few more in here before we switch. And alrighty. So now we're going to go into core twists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand with my feet comfortable underneath my hips. Uh, you're going to put your hands in cactus arms or goalpost arms. So what that is, is if you put your hands out into a T, like we did with the windmill toe touches and with the arm circles, and then you bend your elbows, but keeping your elbows in the same spot, you're gonna move your hands so your fingertips point to the sky. So elbows are level with my shoulders, fingertips to the sky, palms facing forward, and my arms are about bent in an L shape or a 90 degree angle. So, now that we're in this position, you can also just put your hands on your hips, but I think I get a better stretch when my arms are up like this. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to keep your feet, feet planted where they are, and then you're going to twist your shoulders and your core to the left, and then face forward, shoulders and core to the right, and then face forward. So just doing some core twists here, activate those abdominals. Those ab muscles. Awesome. Get turn a few times. Awesome. So now we're going to switch from core twists to do calf raises or heel raises. So if you need to hold onto something for balance for this one, that's totally okay. Uh, this one does require a little bit more balance. I'm going to hold on to the wall next to me for balance. But what you're going to do is stand with your feet underneath your hips. And if you need um, more uh, support with balancing, you can move your feet further apart. That helps um, stabilize you. But what you're going to do is you're going to lift both your heels up at the same time towards the ceiling, but keeping your toes on the ground and then dropping your heels down. Heels up. Heels down, heels up, heels down, heels up, heels down. Awesome. Great. So now that we have done our warm up, I'm going to get a drink of water because I've been talking quite a bit. And then we'll get into our first circuit, which is our summer circuit. So I'm going to describe the three exercises for the summer circuit. Go ahead and practice them with me, and then we'll go into doing 30 seconds of each three times through. So our summer circuit is rowing, biking, and surfing. So three different activities you definitely do in the summer. So uh, rowing, biking, and surfing. So let's start with rowing. This whole circuit, by the way, is on the ground. So I'm going to get down on the ground. So now I'm sitting. My feet are flat on the floor. My knees are pointed towards the ceiling. And um, my back is not, I'm not laying down. I'm still sitting up. So uh, I'm sitting. And this is how our starting position is actually going to be for our seated rows. So rowing, we're going to do seated rows for our exercise. So what you're going to do is um, extend your arms straight in front of you. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your fists, your forearms on the outsides of your knees and your fists, you're going to put your hands in fists. You're going to sit up straight and tall when you do this. Keep your shoulders uh, rolled back. And what you're going to do is 
is you go seated row. You're going to move your, uh, bend your elbows and tuck them back behind you. And so your fists will go from the outsides of your knees back to, towards your rib cage and your elbows are sticking back behind you. So arms are on the outside of my four, our forearms are on the outside of my knees. My fists are, my hands are in fists. I'm gonna pull my elbows back behind me, bringing my fists from in front of my knees back towards my rib cage. And those are gonna be our seated rows. And if you want to add weight to this and hold weights or soup cans in either hand, feel free to do that. So those are gonna be our seated rows. So that's for our rowing outdoor pursuit. And the reason that we're doing these is um, while it may be March right now, while uh, we're doing this video, uh, this is kind of the time when you want to get into shape and start thinking about what type of activities you're going to be doing outside during the summer. So doing rowing. Rowing is our first one. The next one is biking. So we are going to do bicycle crunches. So, so uh, what we're going to do is you're going to lay down on your back. And once you're laying on your back, what you're gonna do is you have your knees so pointed up to the ceiling and your feet flat on the floor. So uh, when you're, um, so when you're laying on your back, your feet are flat on the floor, your knees are pointed to the ceiling, your arms, I put my arms behind my head. So my hands are behind my head, above my neck, and my elbows are pointed out to the sides. So what you're going to do for bicycle crunches is one leg is going to be extended out straight. So I've extended my right leg out straight. And right now it can lay on the ground, that's fine. And then my left knee is still bent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my core muscles to lift up my head. I'm not using my hands to lift up my head and I'm not using my neck to lift up my head. I'm really using those core muscles and that lift is coming from my core and uh, to engage my upper body, not my head and my hands. So I'm going to lift up my shoulders off the ground and then I'm going to bring my left knee in towards my chest and meet my left knee to my right elbow. So my right elbow meets my left knee, which makes me turn a little bit, and then I'll come back down, and I will extend my left leg and bend my right knee. So my left leg is now extended, my arms and my head are back down on the ground. Now what I'm going to do is take my left elbow, bring it to my right knee in front of my torso, and then I'll switch again left knee to right elbow and right leg extended. So when we were practicing this, your leg that was extended was resting on the ground. But as you go faster and move faster through this exercise, you, that leg is actually gonna be um, raised a couple inches off of the ground. So it's going to, um, your legs are going to be making the motion of riding a bike. So that's going to be our bicycle crunches. So opposite elbow to opposite knee and keep repeating back and forth. Those are our bicycle crunches. Next summer activity is surfing. So for surfing, we're going to do alternating supermans. So lay on your belly and once you're on your belly, you can extend your arms out in front of you and your legs behind you. And when you're doing alternating supermans, uh, we're using opposition again, which we talked about earlier. So uh, you're going to, this is gonna kind of be like if we're on a surfboard surfing. So you're gonna put, you raise and extend your left arm out straight as far as you can, and it's a few inches off the ground. When you do it with your left hand, you're gonna raise your right leg up off the ground a few inches and extend it out back behind you as far as you can. So you're going to do that lift and then you're going to come down and then you're going to do it on the opposite side. 
Extend your right arm out in front of you, raise it off the ground. Extend your left leg behind you, raise it off the ground, and then come down. So these are called alternating supermans. And if we were on a surfboard, you would actually be paddling your arms, but we're gonna lift our arms up in front of us and extend our legs behind us. So that's our surfing motion. So our three summer exercises are rowing, biking, and surfing. And that's seated rows, bicycle crunches, and alternating supermans. So get a drink of water. I'm going to take a sip. And I'm gonna start our app. So again, we're gonna do 30 seconds each. We're gonna do 10 seconds of rest in between for transition time to get into the right pose for the next exercise. And we'll do them each three times. So we are going to start the cues that it, the app is going to use are rest and exercise. So those are uh, when it, the app says it out loud, just in case uh, it's difficult to hear through the video, I will repeat the app when it says. So, and the app will do three beeps. It'll go beep, 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 and that means you have three seconds left. Each beep is three seconds. And there's a whistle that blows to initiate rest and exercise. So, those are might be some noises that you'll hear. So, we're going to start, and it'll give us five seconds to get into our ready position. So, ready position for seated rows, sitting down. Feet flat on the floor, knees pointing to the sky, fists on the outsides of your knees, or forearms on the outsides of your knees. All right. Three, two, one. Exercise, 30 seconds. Keep that back straight, shoulders ro rolled back. Move those arms from the outside of your knees, tuck those elbows back. Doing some rows. Pretend you're on a boat. Imagine yourself rowing a boat in the summertime. We're almost there, it's March, so. Three, two, one, rest. We're gonna get into the position for our bicycle crunches. Laying down on your back, feet planted on the floor, one leg extended, hands behind your head, and exercise. Alternating opposite knee, opposite elbow. One leg straight, the other leg meeting that elbow, using your core to lift your shoulders off the ground and not your hands or your neck. Nice job. Two, one, rest. Get into your Superman position, your surfing position. Roll onto your belly, hands and legs in front of you, and alternating Superman's exercise. Opposite hand and opposite leg, extending and lifting up. Nice job. So my right hand and left leg are extending at the same time, bringing them down. Extending left hand and right leg at the same time. I'm imagining myself in the ocean surfing and rest. Get into that position for rowing. Sitting up tall, feet on the floor, knees point to the ceiling, and exercise. Bring those fists back towards you. Sitting up straight, shoulders back, fists going from just on the outside in front of your knees to back to your rib cage. Feel free to hold some soup cans, add some weight if you like. And rest, get in your bicycle position. Laying your back flat on the ground, hands behind your head. Knee to elbow and exercise. Let's go. Imagine yourself on a nice summer bike ride. Knee to elbow. Extend the other leg. Nice job. Keep 
keep it up. Don't forget to breathe. Use those core muscles. Rest to get into that surfing position. Hands out in front of you on your belly and go alternating left and right. Awesome. Imagine yourself at the beach on a surfboard. Maybe there's fish swimming under you, maybe there's not. In my case, I would hope there wouldn't be. <laughs> if you like fish, <laughs> maybe you imagine they're there. All right, rest. Get ready for our last circuit. Seated rows. Get up and ready and exercise. Seated rows, our last one. Feet are on the floor, knees point towards the ceiling. Back straight, shoulders back. Arms are, forearms are on the outside of my knees. Tucking my elbows back behind me. Remembering to breathe. And rowing down a nice calm river. That's what I am picturing. All right, now next up, bike, bicycle crunches, biking, last bike ride of summer. Hands behind your head and exercise. Opposite arm to opposite knee. Nice job. Use those core muscles to get your shoulders and head up. Relax those neck muscles. Don't forget to breathe. Rest. Now get into that surfing position. Last one. Arms out in front of you on your belly and exercise. Left arm and right leg, right arm and left leg. Awesome. Keep it up. Paddling to a secret island. And rest. We get our last 10 seconds of rest. And get a drink of water. Awesome. All right, that says we're done. The whistle blew. You spent six minutes, five seconds All right. exercising. I'm getting some water. Now we're gonna go into our spring and autumn circuit. So our spring and autumn circuit is all standing so it's a little bit of a change from our summer so our spring and autumn exercises are backpacking hiking and climbing so backpacking is like when you literally stuff a backpack full of all the stuff you need uh, like sleeping bag food cooking stuff water uh, and you go out backpacking so that's what that means is you go hiking you need uh, hike a long ways, you camp out, sleep at night, continue hiking. So you're going on a large adventure carrying everything you need on your back. So backpacking, what you're going to do is when we're backpacking, we're going to check to make sure our backpack is still on us. So in order to do that, we're going to do glute kicks. So backpacking backpacks are quite long. What we're going to do is glute kicks check to see if our backpack is still hanging on our back, see if we can kick it with our heels. So for glute kicks, what you're gonna do, we move our arms in all position for glute kicks as well. So get those arms in those L shapes, 90 degree angles. And what you're gonna do, take your left heel and kick it up to your left glute. When you do that, your right arm comes forward, bring them both down. Right heel to right glute, left arm forward, both down. So that is glute kicks. And so you can do these at a marching pace. You can do these at a faster pace to get more cardio in, or you can do them at whatever pace in the middle. It feels good for you. 
So that's backpacking or glute kicks. Next up, hiking, high knees. So hiking, uh, especially if you're somewhere that gets a lot of snow in the winter uh, or gets a lot of rain in the spring, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be hiking and you're gonna have, uh, your feet are gonna be in mud. So, so that's why we have to do high knees to stay out of mud. So what you're gonna do is just like we did in the warm up, left knee up to the ceiling or to your chest, right arm forward, then bring them down, right knee up to the ceiling or to your chest, left arm forward. So keep continuing to do those high knees. You can do them at marching pace, like you're walking and your feet are really stuck and you're pulling them out, or you can do them at fast pace and get more cardio in. So those are your options. So backpacking is glute kicks, hiking is high knees. Next one, um, I was just kidding when I said everything was standing up. This next one is not actually on the ground. So sorry about that. Uh, the next one is climbing. So people go like rock climbing, they do climbing outside. So you're gonna actually get on all fours for this climbing. So I'm on my hands and my knees. I'm in tabletop position, which means my knees are underneath my hips. My elbows and wrists are underneath my shoulders. My back is straight so I could rest a dinner plate on it and nothing would fall off. Uh, maybe put uh, your favorite beverage on your back, like hot chocolate or some juice or whatever, and you can't spill it because then you don't get to drink it. So keep your back straight and by doing that you can engage your core. So for climbing, you know when you climb, you all your um, your hands and your feet are in contact with the wall or the rock that you're climbing. So uh, until you reach to reach for another step or another hold to grab with your hand. So we're going to be doing bird dog crunches for climbing. So what you're going to do is extend, we're going to do opposition again, surprise, surprise. So extend your right hand, arm out in front of you. So now you're balancing on your left hand, left leg, and right leg. Your right arm is up, extended out in front of you, reaching towards, if you're um, on a mountain, reaching towards something that you can grab to help pull yourself up. While you're doing that, um, that's the first option is to just grab. Um, the second option is to do just a leg. So pushing yourself up. So extending your left leg behind you as far as you can go, keeping that back straight. And then the third option is to extend both at the same time in opposition. So right arm forward, left arm back, extend it out as far as they can. Now you're balancing on your left hand and your right leg. And then you'll bring them back down and extend on the other side. So that is our climbing activity. You're reaching for something with your hands and you're pushing off with your feet so you can get extra space to reach for that hold to get higher on the on the climb, the wall, the rock, whatever you're climbing. So that is our three exercises, backpacking, hiking, climbing, glute kicks, high knees, and bird dog. So get a drink of water. I know I need one because I'm chatty. Alrighty. So we're going to start off with our backpacking, which is our glute kicks. I'm going to get our timer set really quickly. And we'll count down together. So starting with glute kicks, I'm hitting play. And exercise glute kicks. Get those heels to your glutes. Move those arms. Go to 90 degree angles on your sides. And we're backpacking, making sure our backpacks still behind us. Don't want to lose any of those valuable items for survival. Awesome, keep it up. Three, two, one, rest. Our next position is high knees, so you can stay standing. So this is a good rest opportunity to get water. 
three, two, one, high knees. So get those knees up high, use those arms in opposition, marching pace or a fast cardio pace, whatever you choose. And getting, climbing that mat, getting our feet out of the mud. Maybe you're hiking or maybe you're snowshoeing. Some snow left in the spring or late fall. And rest. Get into that bird dog position. On tabletop position, all fours. And exercise. Reaching out, opposite hand and opposite leg. Pretending we're climbing. Reaching for that hold. Extending. Awesome. Rest. Rest. Great. Now we're going to get into that glute positioning, glute kicks, backpacking, and go. Exercise. Nice job. Backpacking. I don't know where you're backpacking. Some people like to go backpacking in Europe. Maybe that's where I'll imagine I am. My home in rainy Washington State. <laughs> Keep it up. And rest. Ready for high knees. That rest is a good opportunity for water. And exercise, high knees. Nice job. We're hiking. Hiking or snowshoeing in the colder months of spring and fall, autumn. Nice job. Keep it up, keep it up. And rest. Third dog position, tabletop. We're about to go climbing. I've been climbing in Wisconsin, at Devil's Lake. And I'm out in the back there, climbing outside in the nice spring weather, climbing up those rocks, alternating. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Getting in shape to do all the fun outdoor pursuits that we can do. All right, rest. Now we're gonna get ready for our last, our last set. So backpacking, glute kicks up next. Ready, exercise. Glute kicks, backpacking, let's go. Getting our hearts pumping. This one's definitely heavy on cardio. I love it. Show 10 seconds left. Almost made it to my final camping spot destination. And rest. Get ready for high knees. Hiking. Ready? Three, two, one, exercise. High knees, hiking. Last hike of the season. We're gonna hike back down to the end of the trail. We have some rain coming. I'll make it down before the rain catches us. Keep going. 10 seconds left. Three. Two, one, rest. Bird dog position, tabletop, hiking. Get ready to, or climbing, climbing. Get ready to climb and exercise. Opposite arm, extended with opposite knee. Awesome, awesome. I'm almost to the top of my climbing destination. 
Nice job. And rest. Well deserved. Nice job. This is our 10 second rest. Feel free to get a drink of water and done. That was the end of our 10 seconds. Done. Great work. Awesome. All right, you're setting the app. So I'm going to get a drink of water and we will go into our winter circuit. So much fun. Alrighty, so our winter circuit's brand new exercises. This one has a little bit of cardio also. So definitely getting in shape for all those outdoor pursuits we're gonna be doing. Um, and I'm, even if you wanna do them now as well, you have the right terrain. Awesome. So winter, our three outdoor pursuits activities, skiing, snowboarding, and ice skating. So for those three activities, first is skiing. We're gonna do ski jumps. So putting both of your feet together, close together. If you have skis on and you have a good stance, you're gonna always have your knees bent a little bit. So bend those knees ever so slightly. And we're doing in our ski jumps. So ski jumps means you're gonna be jumping from side to side ever so slightly. Um, as if you were skiing moguls off the ski mine. So uh, we're gonna have our elbows, our arms bent, our elbows tucked in by our rib cage. Um, and what you're gonna do is I'm gonna jump from my right to the left ever so slightly. So if there's say a small stick to my left that I need to jump over or a snake, a spider, maybe those aren't on mountains, a weasel. <laughs> Some, jumping over something small on the ski mountain. So knees bent, elbows tucked back. When you jump to the left, you're going to extend your arms out straight in front of you while you're jumping. And then you're going to land with your knees bent and when you land, you're going to tuck your arms back. So jump, arms out, land, arms back. Land with a little bit of bend in your knees. Jump, arms out, land, arms back. Jump, arms out, land, arms back. So those are our ski jumps. So jumping from side to side. Jump, arms out, land, arms back. And we're just gonna keep jumping side to side. So you can do these um, like a two count, like when I jump, you can go one, two, jump again, one, two, kind of like if you were in the rhythm of jump roping, or you can just jump, 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 whatever um, you'd like to do best. You get to pick the piece that you go at. Uh, so that's ski jumps. Next up, snowboarding. So snowboarding, um, this one is gonna be more of getting some side lunges in. So if you're standing with your feet shoulder width apart, you're gonna step one step further out. So your feet are Nice to spread apart, kind of like when we did with those windmill toe touches. Enough that it's comfortable, you're not gonna split. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna straighten one leg, so my left knee is straight, and I'm gonna bend my right knee. And when I do that, I'm feeling a stretch on my leg that's straight on the inside of my left leg. And then I'm gonna come back to regular position, starting position, bend my left knee and straighten my right knee. So come back to regular starting position, bend my right knee, and come back to regular position, bend my left knee. So one leg is bent and one leg is straight. And you're just doing an ever so slight bend. So not a full 90 degree angle bend, um, maybe 165, 175. So the angle is pretty open. Um, and that is our snowboarding. So when you're snowboarding down a hill, you bend your knees and you bend them depending on how much you want to turn um, and use the board. So that's our snowboarding is side lunges. And then we'll come back for ice skating. So ice skating is skater jumps. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to start on my right side of my mat because I am going to jump to the left. 
uh, or hop to the left rather. So um, skater jumps as I'm on my right, so I'm gonna put all my weight on my right leg and I'm gonna lift up my left leg off the ground. So my right, my left knee is bent and my left foot is dangling behind me. What I'm gonna do with the legs, I'll grab the legs first, is I'm going to push off of my right leg to, so I'm traveling to my left, and then I'm gonna land on my left leg with my right um, leg now bent. So you're kind of mirroring what you were just doing. So all my weight's on my left leg, right knee is bent, and right foot is just dangling behind me. And so you'll repeat that, jumping from the left to the right, to the left to the right, and that's the feet position. And if um, hopping over to each side is um, difficult for balance, which I definitely can sometimes have trouble balancing like that, you can take a large step over to the side so that you always have one foot in contact with the ground instead of hopping each side. So that's the foot part. Hand part. You want to use your hands to help your momentum and balance. So if I'm starting on the right, my uh, all my weight is on my right foot. When I move over to the left, I'm going to gradually, uh, gracefully, as gracefully as I can, sweep my arms over to the left. So when I I'll land on my left foot, my hands are both loosely pointing to the left. So my right hand is kind of across my body to the left, and my left hand is pointing up to the left. When I jump to the right, I hop to the right. My um, left hand is loosely across my body pointing to the right and my right hand is pointing to the right. So pointing into the direction that you're going to help your body with movement and balance. So that is skiing, snowboarding, ice skating, ski jumps, side lunges, and skater jumps. So now what we're going to do is our winter circuit. So I'm going to get the timer ready and we will start with ski jumps. Alrighty, and I'm going to hit play. Three, two, one, skier jumps. So feet together, jumping from side to side, arms out when you jump, arms back when you land. Landing with a little bit of bend in your knees and going down those moguls. Imagining at the top of a mountain, going down. Awesome. And rest. Now we get into your snowboarding position. This is another good option to get water. Feet wide and shoulder width apart. Bending your right leg, straightening your left. Coming back to center, bending your left leg, straightening your right. Awesome. This is our snowboarding. Imagine you're going down the hill, making some turns. A powder day, so you're kind of just feel like you're floating through the clouds here. And rest. Get ready for those skater jumps. Another good opportunity to get a drink since all of them are standing up. And exercise, skater jumps, jumping from right to left, sweeping your arms across your body to gracefully point in the direction you're headed. Awesome. Woo. Doing good. Nice job. And rest. That ice skating one is, I'm not so great at ice skating in real life. <laughs> All right, exercise, ski jumps, feet together, jumping side to side, arms forward when you jump, arms back when you land, keep that one in your knees, going downhill on the mountain. Awesome. And rest. Get ready 
for snowboarding. You need to get a drink, it's a good time. Legs far apart. And exercise, bend one leg, straighten the other. Awesome. Hands on your hips for balance if you need. And cruising downhill. My favorite time is the snowboard is when snow's nice and fluffy. Awesome. And rest, get ready for those skater jumps. Starting on the right side, I'm gonna hop to my left. Three, two, one, exercise. Skater jumps, for me, this is difficult to imagine. I'm not so great at ice skating. I get very nervous on ice skates. So if you're ice skating at the local ice rink or Maybe there's a pond frozen over by your house. Awesome. Get ready, rest, and get ready for ski jumps. It's almost there. And exercise. Feet together, jumping left to right. Jump our arms forward, land arms back. Skiing down a mountain. Going through all those moles. Nice. Five seconds. All right. Now get ready for our resting. We're getting ready for our snowboard. Arms or legs wide apart and exercise. Bend that knee, straighten the other leg. Nice. Come down. My local mountain is Mount Hood. I'm going down. Mount, Mount Hood, getting some good turns. Fresh powder day, not a cloud in the sky. Yes. Awesome. All right, rest. And skater jumps is next. This is our last one. And exercise. So we're skater jumping. Arms are sweeping across our body. Awesome. Ice skating, either indoors or outdoors. I think ice skating on a small lake might be cool. So that's where I'm imagining I am. Less crowded than indoor ice rinks. And rest, that's our last rest. Get a drink of water. And done. Awesome. So, getting some water and we'll go into our pool now. So we're gonna do our cool down on the ground. So I'm just standing waiting for the water to get down to my belly before I get down there. Alrighty, so laying on our bellies, what you're going to do is we're gonna do cobra or seal pose if you're familiar with it. So hands underneath your shoulders, straighten your arms, pushing your upper body off of the ground. Uh, and your legs stay on the ground, stretching out your uh, core muscles. So after we did those bicycle crunches, we did those Superman's bird dog, we did a lot for our core today. So stretch that out. Awesome. That feels better than usual for me today. All right, we're gonna lay on our backs now. And if you have other Cool down exercises that you like to do, cool down stretches, feel free to do those. If you want to hold them longer than I am, just pause the video, hold them longer. No harm done. So now I'm on my back. I'm going to put my legs up straight. My hands are by my sides. I'm going to then pull my right knee in to my chest so my right leg is bent. 
So I'm gonna hug up my arms around my knee. And then while you're here, your right ankle is kind of just free hanging in the air. So if you wanna do some circles, ankle circles, and your big toe is a paintbrush, paint some circles, go ahead and do that. Awesome. All right, and then you can switch. So bring your right, left knee to your chest, right leg out straight. Hug your left knee with your arms. Draw some circles with your big toe. Get your ankle involved here. Your ankle do a lot, especially for those ski jumps, skier jumps. All right, now we're gonna go into our line twist. So what you're gonna do is lift both knees or both legs off the ground and bend your knees. So my shins are parallel with the ceiling, my toes are pointed towards the ceiling and my legs are bent at 90 degree angles or L shapes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hands out on the T on either side of me and I'm gonna let my knees fall over to the right. Keeping my upper body in the same spot. Stretch out my back a little bit. Alrighty. When you're ready, come back to center. And now walk over, walk our knees over to the left. And when your arms are in a T here, you're stretching out um, your shoulder area a little bit as well, which is nice. All right, I'm gonna sit up now and I'm going to put my um, legs out straight in front of me and I'm gonna do a seated forward fold. So I'm gonna attempt to touch my toes um, and I'm actually gonna end up landing on my shins today. Totally fine. If you're at your knees, that's okay. So just reach towards those toes. Sometimes I can reach them, sometimes I can't. All depends on the day. All right, and we're gonna go into a tricep stretch. So for a tricep stretch, what you're gonna do is raise your left hand up to the sky. Then you're gonna bend your left arm so your elbows towards the sky and your left hand is gonna fall behind your right shoulder. And then what you're gonna do is take your right hand Put it on the outside of your left arm and kind of pull it towards the center of your body to get an extra stretch in there along your tricep or the outside of your arm. Awesome, and when you're ready, we can switch. So raise your right hand up to the sky, bend that uh, right arm, your elbow pointing towards the ceiling, uh, right hand behind your left shoulder. Take your left hand, put it on the outside of your right arm and pull it forward, or not forward, towards your butt, towards the center of your body. Wonderful. And then we will end with butterfly pose. So I am sitting down putting my bottoms of my feet together. So the soles of my feet together, which makes my knees bend out to the sides. And to make this more intense, you can bring your feet in closer to your body and lean forward. Have your knees point out more to the sides for less of a stretch. Put your feet outwards. Don't lean forward as much and your knees might knock up a little bit towards the ceiling or point up. And that is our last stretch. If you feel like you need to stretch more, please do. Thank you so much for joining our Outdoor Pursuits Secondary Virtual PE lesson. So glad to have you. And we hope that you enjoyed it. Bye.